I was so um, broken. Like there were so many pieces to put back together as far as trying to figure out how to fit in a society. I had been basically absent from the world for like 17 years, you know. I mean, I was 11 when I started drinking and there was never a sense of like returning to normalcy. This is how I got to Volunteers of America. I used the whole time I was pregnant from then on. We were actually living in a junkyard in a house with no electricity and no water, nothing. And we'd been living there for a few months. And uh, I went into labor there. Jordan was very sick when he was born. So he was in the NICU for seven weeks, withdrawn from alcohol and some other stuff. And so when I came out and came out of detox, I just drank and drank and drank. And I, and I remember praying, I remember talking to God in the mirror the night before I was supposed to go to Volunteers of America. And I was begging God, please just get me there. Please let that place take me. And if they take me in the morning, I won't drink anymore. And they took me in the morning. So this is Volunteers of America Freedom House. And this is where our kids played and where we came to meet in between. We did classes over in this building. And I always tell everybody that Volunteers of America gave that to us and they advocated for us. We did our parenting classes, relapse prevention classes life skills. Our family would come in and do family yeah. education classes in that building as well. Yes. You know, whenever I got sober, I was so broken and so beaten that I didn't trust anyone. I didn't trust myself. Yeah. And I think she was probably the first person. You were the first person that I trusted. I was in an apartment that I was evicted from. They just hadn't physically moved me out yet. I had no electricity, no running water. My family hadn't spoke to me in several months. Every morning that I woke up, I was angry that God let me live. I was too big of a chicken to take my own life. And then I came here and I was scared to death. And I needed a facility like this to tell me to get up and take a shower, to tell me, hey, you need to wash your clothes. You need to make your bed whenever you get out of bed. I had no idea. I was living on the street so unmanageable for so long that I needed people to tell me how to live. And so that's what this place gave me. And for the first time in my life, while I was living here, I found it more rewarding to be able to be present for my child than to be able to chase that next drink. It's a really spiritual moment for me. My older daughter was present through my addiction and I just had accepted that that was going to be my life. But on the inside I knew that I was meant for so much more. I was so newly in my pregnancy, you know, that nobody wanted to keep me anywhere. They said, we'll just have to put you back out. And that's whenever they decided to take me. So if it wasn't for Volunteers of America, I might have possibly been out on the streets because they pregnant. served pregnant women. And there's not many places in the state of Kentucky that offer that. I got Jordan back when I was nine months sober. And then we had the new baby. And Sissy, Rory, has never had a drug or anything in her system. She's the first sober baby. And she's never seen us drunk or anything. Here's your buddy. Me and Amy have been through it together. And when I'm able to come back to Louisville or talk to her on the phone and I see that she is this amazing mother and she's this amazing friend and, and such a success, I'm so proud. Being sober teaches you that you don't think about yourself, that you think about other people. And um, it's because of her story and the strength that she has that sometimes I feel like I'm able to do what I'm able to do. Her story is a true example of faith, strength, courage, and hope. I feel really privileged and honored and um, grateful because there's a million other people out there with stories just like mine that deserve to be heard. They deserve to be loved just like anybody else.